Dale Wentworth competed on the 29th season of San Juan del Sur, where he finished in 13th place. Initially looking like he would be an early boot, Dale managed to turn it around to survive to the Tribe Switch, where he unfortunately once again found himself at the bottom and was voted out just prior to the merge. I spoke to Dale about his relationship with Baylor and just why it never worked, his true feelings on Missy, as well as how frustrating it was to have not made the merge, and just what it was like hanging out with Kelly on the pre-merge trip. Dale, welcome back to Survivor Oz. Thank you very much. Glad to be here. It's a pleasure to have you here, mate. As uh, just uh, the time of recording this, I spoke to your lovely daughter all of an hour ago. So uh, we're, we're getting the Wentworths done and dusted today. We had a good chat with Kelly. So uh, we're expecting big things here, Dale. No pressure. Uh, Kelly's a hard act to follow, but back to back, just like on the island, I finished a little bit farther than she did, so maybe I'll be a little bit better this time as well. I don't doubt it. I don't doubt it at all. But uh, everything's over and done with now, of course. Uh, it's been about a little over a month since it's all wrapped up. Are, are things back to normal now uh, for, you, for yourself in 2015? I'm still dealing with some residual survivor stuff, a couple newspaper things, being in a small town, so... Um, I don't think you ever completely get over Survivor, which is good and bad. Well, clearly both. Like, uh, I think it's something that's obviously going to be with you for, um, well, I'd, I'd say ever. Because, I mean, we, we get people on this show that were on the on Survivor over a decade ago, and they're still getting um, noticed for it, though. So uh, it's always going to be there, I feel. Well, yeah, I think so. I mean, like, say there's just, um, like, they talked to us before we started the game, said you're only three of... X amount of people of 370 that have ever been picked to play this game. So it is a very select crowd. No matter how you're finished, you're still part of a select number of people to be on a, a phenomenal show. It's, I, I hate to call it a show. It's a contest or whatever it boils down to, but uh, it's quite a privilege to say the least. Now, we spoke to Kelly a little bit about going into it, how uh, initially it was sort of done for The Amazing Race and then you're switched over to Survivor. Uh, you obviously targeted Nadia eventually for her time on The Amazing Race. Can can I take from that that you're more of an Amazing Race fan than Survivor, or you sort of like both shows equally? Um, no, I'm more of a Survivor fan. It's just that Kelly and I never really thought to try out for Survivor because they've only done the one Blood versus Water theme, so we wasn't really thinking about trying out as a pair. And it, for some, I mean, we both watched it from Season 1, um, I haven't watched that much of The Amazing Race. Um, the bad thing about Nadia getting picked out, um, I mentioned it in one of my exit interviews, sometimes it's not who's bad, who's good, it's the only person whose name comes up. And it's just, uh, the first vote is so tough because everybody's afraid to really throw a name out there because they're afraid everybody will turn on them. So it's just kind of like you toss a name out and when nobody says no, it's, okay, let's explore that one, and that's who gets picked out. So yeah. um, her no notoriety probably got her name a little bit more attention than what it deserved. A question I asked Kelly, I'd be intrigued to hear your thoughts on this. H how do you think you guys would have gone on The Amazing Race had you been selected for that over Survivor? Um, I think we could have done pretty good. We're both very competitive. Unfortunately, we're both type A personalities, so we might have... We might have made some really good TV for budding heads together. Uh, to be, <laughs> just, we figured that out a little bit in the pre, uh, the, the post jury trip we went on that, uh, sometimes we don't take directions from each other very well. So <laughs> it would have made, it might have made for some pretty good TV. I would have watched that. That would have been intriguing to watch. Uh, I mean, you, you sort of mentioning before about Nadia, how obviously you've got to, you know, get, somebody out there first of all as long as it's not you essentially the, for the first vote so you, you looked very early on like you were on the outs and you managed to turn that around uh, I mean how worried were you in those initial days that it could be you first to go particularly when Coyopa did lose that first challenge well you're always uh, you don't think about it too much until you go to first tribal council and to obviously there's not a lot of people been there. That is one of the most stressful situations you can imagine walking into because you know somebody's going home and you look around and there's not that many people on the target. Um, I knew I had a hard time um, socializing or getting together with a lot of the people on my tribe just due to the fact of the age difference. Mm -hmm. They automatically had similar music, taste. They were all East Coast. I was the only person from the West Coast. So there was just such a dramatic difference between me and the other, 
nine, eight people on the tribe that it was tough to break that. And uh, it's tough to comprehend how fast that game really goes. How, and um, it's tough. Who, added, I mean, we obviously saw a bit of the, the relationships formed and kind of how the, the target went on to, to Nadia, but were there relationships that you made early on that perhaps we didn't really get a chance to see too much of? I mean, who were the people you were working with early on and, and getting close with uh, in those early days of Koyopa? Uh, Josh was probably the closest one I was working working with. Um, I was working with John Rocker a little bit. I was trying to work with Val, but she put that uh, two uh, immunity idol out there, and that was tough to come over. But Josh and I was really working close. In fact, I spoke to John after the show. In fact, Josh mentioned on one of the exit interviews that, um, that him and Reed just about threw that last challenge to get me to the merge to give them better numbers um are the singles against the couples. Wow. And but it's just one of those that throwing it as Drew found out, <laughs> throwing a immunity challenge never works out. It's, it, it, historically it's very seldom worked, but they saw their numbers on that side, they saw how the numbers were playing out over there, so they were trying to throw a challenge so he could get me back in with them again. It's fascinating, the whole throwing a, a challenge situation, because, yeah, you're absolutely right. Historically, it doesn't work. I, I, I mean, technically, with Hanapu, obviously, Natalie went on to win, but she really wasn't involved in throwing the challenge. So if you, if you look at kind of the tribes that are all actively involved in throwing a challenge, generally, they never go on to win the game. So that would have been very interesting to see how that would have played out had they thrown that to keep you into the merge. Yeah, and like I say, if you look at the numbers and that sort of stuff, but would they have made so many enemies within their tribe? Because it's very seldom do you have all nine people or a majority in on that, because there's, of course, in, with defense of this season, there was enough people that didn't have a clue how they were playing the game. It might have worked. <laughs> yes. Well, we saw that, didn't we, with Natalie being able to quickly uh, pull the wool over so many people's eyes with what she was doing out there. <laughs> yes, the old, the old stick to the plan comment by Keith is just completely submarine read from left field. I mean, there are so many game changing things that happen in it, in this game that in normally a normal survivor se- season by people who had played or at least, or excuse me, not played, but had ever watched at least an episode of it would have figured it out. But this season, um, I don't know if there were so much blindsides. It's just uh, running into walls. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, I mean, I asked that to Kelly, and, and I know Jeremy kind of summed it up well in the reunion about kind of playing with people that don't necessarily, uh, you know, aren't students of the game, as I suppose Jeremy puts it. But, I mean, do you feel that made it easier for someone like yourself who knows about the game, or does it make it harder because they're a lot more unpredictable with what they're going to do? I, I think it made it immensely harder because, number one, you saw number the first place, everybody who had been a student of the game, the Jeremy, the Reed, the Josh, Kelly and I, we, we were gone quick. Mm. I mean, um, they could see us talking strategy, and we'd go to talk to strategy with uh, Alec, for instance, and you just get this blank stare in his eye, and it was kind of like, well, vote out whoever you want, just don't vote me, and those people aren't playing to win. They're just playing to play and see how far they can go. And like Jeff will tell you, if you aren't playing to win the game, you'll probably make it far, but you're just going to be drug along, which is how a lot of those people turned out. It's it's really tough because you can explain the situation to them and what you're trying to do, but it's just get this... There's a lot going on, but nothing upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's, I mean, we, we kind of talked a lot about that throughout this season. I mean, I, I for one, was a defender of your season. I, I, I loved Sam Wandel, so I thought it was a great season. But I, I often would say that, yeah, like, in terms of the players, particularly towards the end, I mean, we, we, we didn't have, like, the previous season on Kagai Arm, we had, you know, Tony Spencer, you know, we had these big players who were really trying to do things the whole way, whereas towards the end of your season, we only really kind of had, like, a Natalie trying to do a few things here and there and John and Jacqueline when they were trying to do it. So, I mean, to me, that I think is why a lot of people haven't spoken too highly of your season, which I think is a shame because there are so many more positive aspects to your season which people, I feel, overlook. Well, and the the tough part about our season, it's the blood versus water, which adds a whole new element of stress and everything. The emotions get kicked in. And... It was also tough falling on one like Tony, where Tony was looking at things 
three or four votes in advance, yeah. how he would play his idol, how he would give an idol up. I mean, the guy was a strategist like you wouldn't believe, and our season was tough to develop the strategy just from the fact there were so many people that wouldn't think more than an hour in advance, let alone two or three tribal councils down the road, and that's just due to the fact that Tony was a student of the game, Wu was a student of the game, Cass was. They had some people that could really think long range, and we just had too many people that didn't have that long range planning. We tried, I mean, we was trying to do it in the beginning with Josh and I were was working back and forth and we was talking four or five, six votes down the line and but it's tough when you only got two or three people doing that and the rest of them are just, you know, where's my rice? Don't <laughs> vote me out. I'll wake up tomorrow. Yeah, well, that's a lot of the reason I enjoyed your season, though, was was based on those aspects. Because I mean, particularly those middle episodes where where Josh is taken out, and then it looks as though Jeremy's in control, and everybody's like, "Well, Jeremy's won this game," and then Jeremy gets blindsided, which it blindsided the viewer because we got like a, I think a two second scene of John and Missy saying, "Hey, let's take out Jeremy." That was it, and then all of a sudden Jeremy's blindsided, and everyone's like, "Okay." Well, who's going to win this game now? <laughs> well, and and that was the nice thing about it is there was so many changes because you went Josh, Jeremy, then you went Reed. It was just going back and forth. Yeah, and you you would have known going in the vote when Reed was going home that John, little John, was going home, and then Keith made the comment, "Stick to the plan," and all of a sudden, boom, Reed's got game got blown up in a heartbeat. Otherwise, Reed would have taken over that game. But so yeah, there was some dramatic twist to the game, but. Was it because of gameplay or just, oh, I opened my mouth at the wrong time? Because Survivor does turn on just the wrong comment at the wrong time can completely swap that game around. And that was the beauty of this season that it showed. Yeah. Just saying the wrong thing at the wrong time and all of a sudden votes just get scrambled. Yep. Indeed, indeed. One thing I'm sure you got asked a lot of in your exit interview. I didn't even ask this to you in our exit interview, Dale. I feel um, a bit ashamed that I didn't. Uh, your glasses. <laughs> I, I'm guessing you got a new pair of glasses after the season, after breaking them during the season? Yes, I got a new pair of glasses. I still have the old ones. They're hanging around here in my souvenir bag. Beautiful. So um, I've got I've got a couple new ones to replace those that I carry with me just in case I need to start a fire. I have since got a lot stronger pair, so I don't have to spend two or three hours starting a fire. <laughs> you never know when that's going to come in handy, right? <laughs> I also carry a flint, and I carry some matches with me now, because I'm not going to rely on glasses. <laughs> it's always it's always fascinating, I think, in Survivor, that you see people with glasses, because it hasn't been done that often that people take glasses. I know there have been some players who have have or have at least attempted to say they've got glasses to take them with them to use as like, hey, I need glasses to use for starting fire. But you would think, logically, that's kind of a smart thing to go into Survivor. Hey, I need glasses just to start a fire with. Well, and that's, I don't need them. They're just a reading glass. So I didn't need them because they put like size 70 font on the tree mail. So <laughs> that's basically the reason why they went there because um, in the last Nicaragua, I think it was Jane. Uh, she started them and uh, fire with uh, Marty's glasses. There was one in, I think it was either the first or second season, the very first or second season there was somebody, but it's been like three or four times that somebody started a fire with a pair of glasses. So uh, I figured the worst they can do is tell me no. Yeah. And uh, But I gave, put them in there just for them. I tried to use Jacqueline's, but hers weren't a strong enough lens and neither was mine and that's why they ended up being broke so I could double up on the string. It's, it's fascinating kind of what people try and bring out there to use. I, I know um, in speaking to PG from China, she mentioned that she tried to take with her earrings that were made out of fish hooks, but they saw through that and they wouldn't let her take them. <laughs> yeah, they they do. I had one of my belts is actually a cargo strap. Ah. Uh, you know, uh, and so that was... <laughs> now that I'm off the island, but it's... a. Uh, like a, a buckle that's off a backpack or something like that, right. but it can be stretched out. You can extend it out to like 60 inches long. So I was wow. going to use it for a strapping for a, uh, the awning or the shelter, that sort of stuff if I need to. But it's a belt, but it's also a cargo strap that I was going to use. But uh, I got on with it, but I never had to use it. Uh. So there's, 
other things that, uh, you know, you can nothing do. ventured, nothing green. Yeah, you can try out there, whatever gives you an advantage. Well, I mean, you mentioned, obviously, your relationship with Josh and um, John, uh, with, with John Rocker. I mean, we saw you obviously working out who he was and, and you know, his reputation and all that sort of stuff. Was was Were people talking about that more than we saw and kind of was, was I mean, we saw him trying to avoid that with West trying to deny it was him, but when you first realised who he was, did that affect your judgement on him at all or did you just kind of judge him on the person you were playing with rather than his past? I judged John on the way, in fact, I judged everybody on the way they played on the game itself. And the way John played the game, just like I said in that one challenge, he was my teammate and I'll defend him because he played the game as straight up as anybody. There was nothing un, he never said a bad word about anybody. I mean, John and I got along great. Even post game, John and I got along great. So, uh, he was, um, he played a good game. He knew his game was probably short just because guys his size don't last that long. Mm-hmm. You know, eventually the lack of food drags that big motor down because he's a big individual. <laughs> well, it's, it's kind of interesting in watching it because, you know, in re-watching it too, like, I mean, obviously John's always going to get that brought up about his life. I mean, it's something I know that he's used to, but it's it's kind of interesting to see edit that he even got. It, it kind of all boarded around that one fight with Natalie after that challenge. Because, but besides that, I mean, really, he didn't do anything that remotely showed him what he said one time over a decade ago. I mean, he seemed like he was playing a fairly decent game, but he was just being judged harshly on what he said, yeah, like 15 years ago or whenever it was. Yes, and there was a build-up to that. That one episode that was a blow-up, we started getting ripped. Kyopa started getting ripped on the first day we walked in after voting Naughty out. There was another yelling match between uh, Natalie and Jeremy going after our tribe about this and that. And there was a three or four episode of that. And just the one that they blew up was one between John and Natalie where it went on for some time. So we, it was, uh, every time we came in and did the walk of shame from voting somebody out, um, it was just brutal what we faced from Hunapu and from, because the first one was, Nadia voted out. So Natalie unloaded us. The second time we came in, Jeremy and Natalie jumped into the mix and just coming after us. And it was going after every single person in the tribe. And then it led up to the Natalie and Rocker. And then it got into more than that because during that challenge, Kelly was yelling at me. Uh, John was, I mean, every single tribe mate was going back and forth at anybody who has left. It was a war between anybody on each side of the challenge wow. arena. And, um, it was getting pretty intense. Wow. Gee, there you go. And, and of course, um, when Rocker gets voted out, everyone claps. So, <laughs> and, and, that, and that made me mad as much as anything because, you know, and that's the dynamic that blood versus water brings. You don't realize how hard it is when you voted out somebody's loved one and you walk into that arena the next day. You know that, okay, how would I feel if my loved one was voted out? Should those guys be sitting there cheering me or cheering this? And it is very, very tough when you have to walk in and face those people that, for them, they have a completely different idea of why you voted out their loved one. Hmm. You know, Nadia or Natalie had a completely different idea of why we voted out Nadia. She thought it was due to some of John's stuff, this and this. No, it's because she didn't get along well at camp. She didn't do this. She didn't do this. There's a lot of other things. She didn't fit in with the tribe. That's why she got voted out. It's how she played on the game. Uh, But still, from their aspect, you voted out my loved one. I hate your guts. And that's just the blood versus water dynamic. And that's... It makes for good TV in that regard, I guess. I guess, too, one element that was different this time around from the first Blood vs. Water season is that, obviously, last season had Redemption Island, so that you would have all been in that arena. You still would have been able to see the, the loved one, and they could have had their say as to why they were voted out. So this element makes it 
as you said, different because Natalie's going to, you know, assume Nadia was voted out for this reason when it was completely different and Nadia is not there to be able to say, hey, no, I wasn't voted out because of this. So in saying that, were you, uh, looking back on how it all played out, do you wish maybe Redemption Island was in play? Because not only would have that given you an extra chance to come back in the game, but it would have, I suppose, changed things up how it all turned out anyway. Um, For the blood versus water theme and voting somebody out, Redemption Island softens the blow because... You know, you vote the person out, they go to Redemption Island, you still get to see them come back in the challenge, and then you get to see them go out because of a challenge. Yeah. You know, they, you actually get to see that person lose, and you get to say goodbye to them on the way out. The way we played it, it was just like, they show up the next day, and we don't see it for another 38 days or 36 days. Um, the Redemption Island adds a whole new element to the strategy, because you have to start planning so many votes in advance because you saw that in the first blood versus water. If we vote this person out or vote this person out now, we might have to worry about them coming back into the game in three or four immunity challenges and whose tribe do they come back with? Because if I remember right, they didn't always come back to the same tribe they left. Yeah. Sometimes they came in post-merge. So that adds a whole new dynamic of how you have to think in the strategy level. And that one of Tyson and those guys was just phenomenal they had to play because they had to think so far down the road of who they voted out, when they voted them out, if loved ones would pair up later on or split the loved ones, put a loved one on the jury, all this sort of stuff. And we really didn't have to worry about this. You voted them out, they were gone. Yeah, it would have been very interesting to see how that would have... um played out before before the switch um after rocker had been voted out and then obviously we saw drew get voted out had koyopa lost that challenge that uh, eventually drew got voted out were you next who would have been the target um had koyopa lost one more challenge i probably i think i was going to be on the block, chopping block just because the younger tribes were the younger kids were going against uh the older guys um rocker made it oh man just one of the Amazing mistakes. We just saw Val get voted out because she had an idol. Then Rocker goes and tells everybody he gets an idol, and then surprised when he gets voted out. Mm. I mean, uh, you, I mean, Survivor 101, you flush the idol if you know somebody's got it. And then he tells everybody who just did Val 24 hours in advance. So with Rocker gone, that was a cushion between me. You know, he was a little bit closer to my age and uh, the young kids. And I say kids, I mean, they're 25, 30 years old. <laughs> they're still 25 years younger than I am. So with Rocker out being there, I was just, there's such a huge gap between me and everybody else. Um, that, yeah, if the way it switched, if Drew hadn't have been voted out, if Drew hadn't have thrown the challenge, I probably would have went home. In fact, when we stood on that dock, I was, and Kelly was standing next to me, I turned out her, looked at her, I looked at Kelly and I would go, if we lose, I'm going home. Wow. So, um, I, I was pretty sure um, that had we lost after seeing John, I go, okay, now they're coming after the older people next. So probably would have went out a couple of days in advance. Thank you, Drew, is I, I guess what you would be Yeah, saying. thank you, Drew. <laughs> <laughs> you saved me for a few more days there, Drew. Thank you very much. You saved me. Uh, yeah, and that's it. All of a sudden, you, you aren't thinking it's sort of about how fast that game goes. You aren't thinking 24 hours. You're just thinking... Or, I'm not trying to make the merge. I'm just trying to survive to see the sun another day. <laughs> exactly. The switch comes along. You, you get to play with Kelly. Now, she, I mean, she mentioned in her final words that, you know, she wishes she didn't play with you because it ruined her game. But what was your thoughts when that switch came about initially? Were you glad to be on that tribe? Did you feel, oh, shit, this, you know, has, has, has screwed my game up? I mean, what were you thinking at that point? Well, <laughs> and I, I've went through this so many times. I mean, there's... When we handed out those colored buffs, I actually handed colored buffs out to everybody. The bag came to me, and I tossed them out to three or four guys. So I can only blame myself the way that tribe swap happened. But within 10 minutes of Kelly getting to the island, she goes, do you bring any friends? I go, no. She goes, did you bring any friends? No. I go, okay. Okay, who's going to go five or who's going to go six? I mean, there was no debate who was going home. It was going to be Kelly and I mm-hmm. because there was just five people they didn't want to surround anymore. Um she was against John from the begin with because John and Drew were tight, and she took Drew out. So John didn't like Kelly. Jacqueline didn't have use for me. She had already voted me down. Baylor, for whatever reason, for personnel reasons, I don't know. So the numbers were against this. It was just a coin flip before Kelly went first, um, and I went next. The bad thing is we were a couple, and we to back up what Kelly said, and I agree to some 
extent to that. If we would have been by ourselves, one person can weasel themselves into a lion's easier than two. Yeah. And especially when you're trying to do it within 24 hours. And all of a sudden, Kelly and I were trying to weasel two people into an alliance. And to give John and Jacqueline credit, I would have probably done the same thing. They knew that as soon as the merge happened, we probably weren't going to stick with them because we didn't have much use for them before the merge. It's just the way things worked out. So they were tight with Missy. John and Missy were tight from the first two hours on the island, mm. and they weren't going to break up. They, they never voted different. John and Jacqueline never voted different than Missy did the entire time, I don't think, up until the very end. And so we was not going to break up that alliance. Mm. And that was just, that's just the way the game happened. Sometimes, you know, you get played by the game, and sometimes the game plays you, and um, or you play the game. And this one... The swap had us, caught us when we were down on numbers in the alliance, and that was just, you know, ride it out. We should have ate. I should have emptied out our rice bucket and ate it all in two days, but it didn't. <laughs> That's how it all plays. I mean, this is the thing with with the beauty of Survivor is that a switch like that can. That's, yeah, that is. <laughs> yeah, it, it can hurt you guys, but I mean, you know, the uh, flip a coin, it could have worked out beautifully for you guys. You just don't know. Yeah, and you know, if just a buff, one or two colored buffs here or there. And Kelly and I probably could have made the merge. Yep. You know, it's just uh, literally a flip of the coin, and it landed on edge. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. Now, you mentioned Baylor. Now, I've got to bring this up, uh, Dale. What was it with Baylor? What, why did you guys just not get along? Is there something you can pinpoint the relationship between you and Baylor? Ah, uh, Baylor just does not like me. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I don't know whether it was husband one, husband two. Somebody <laughs> must have said something, and I reminded him of it. But um, within the first three or four hours, I tried to talk to Baylor. We went out, and we took a walk, and I go, so, have you thought about this or that, how you want to play the game? I'd like to get an alliance. He goes, I'll let you know what I'm interested in. And that was the extent of the gameplay between Baylor and I. Wow. I never said a bad word. Or, in fact, there are some times I even said we need to keep Baylor around instead of this. You might be better in challenge. But, um, man, there was just oil and water between Baylor and I. We never got along, and we have literally not spoken since. We didn't speak at the finale, nothing. It was just, it was not meant to be. So, um, and then she started spreading stories that I had an idol. I was searching people's bags. Uh, Val said this, that uh, Baylor told me how I was searching bags, and I had an idol and going behind people's backs, and uh, it was just, um, that was a bad tribe. I shouldn't have been there. <laughs> so, uh, I, I hate to say this then, but it was a sticky situation then. Dale. It was a, it, yeah, it was a lot worse than a sticky situation, I will say the least. Um, so it just, it was not going to happen. I, That's the best I can put it. I said that to Kelly and Kelly threatened to uh, hang up if I even mentioned sticky situation or started <laughs> playing it. So I just, I just had to tread carefully there just to make, see what your reaction was going to be to that. So. Yeah. Uh, it's, I'll, 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 I won't hang up, but I'll, I'll remember your comment for a while. All right. All right. No, I mean, one thing though, um, I mean, we, we saw them with, with Missy and kind of what happened there, uh, as Kelly labeled it rice gate. Um, we saw that on, on our screens, the situation with, uh, the rice and sharing that out with Missy. I mean, was there more to that than we saw or really we saw the gist of it? Well, what really, um, Kelly, Missy and I didn't get an argument over the rice. I mean, that was all blown out, um, a proportion. The only thing when Missy made a comment about the rice, I go, look, guys, I go, you guys have went through 25 pounds of rice and 10 pounds of beans. We went through eight pounds of rice. Mm-hmm. and they go, well, when you run out, we're going to get you more. And they go, no, they don't give you any more. This is Survivor. They've never given you rice before unless it's, I think it was Survivor Australia. Flash flood took their rice yeah. bucket away, and then they stripped their camp bare, but they just don't do it to you. And I was trying to make that point that you get 25 pounds, and that's it. And what got me mad when Kelly and I, Kelly grabbed me by the arm and took me by the, took a walk out there was when, um, Missy and John were interacting, and John was calling Missy Mommy. He goes, Mommy, can I have some more rice? Yes, John, John, you can have some more rice. And that went on for two or three hours, and after a while, I go, okay, now this is just wrong that you shouldn't be calling somebody you know, like that on the show. And that's, of course, you know, by that time, I knew my vote was, my name was coming up for a vote. That's why I had to go out and take a walk, just watching John and Missy interact that way. Wow. Wow. There you go. Gee, I didn't know that. I, I love the, the line, though, that, um, again, I'm not doing this to stir up trouble here, Dale, but I, I just love the bit where you get there and you say, self-centered bossy bitch, and that's kind of how they ended that scene <laughs> on, on you having and said that. And, 
<laughs> and I go on first impressions, and I've known Missy all about two hours, and that's the only thing I could come up with. And you know something? Even after five or six months, I can't improve on that one. <laughs> Uh, I got a strict night. What Jeff says, he goes, you got to play from your gut. And the first thing you do, and the first time you take a blink of eye, you go with your reaction. That was my first reaction about Missy. And even Kelly came up because you're absolutely right. So I got to stitch by it. <laughs> I loved, a lot of the fans loved uh, watching you guys on social media, sort of in the latter parts of the season, just watching both your reactions to everything Missy and Baylor were doing. Uh, it looked like you guys were having a lot of fun on Twitter, just sort of uh, talking about what they were doing. It, it's been, I mean, I will say that's been fun just interacting with, with all the fans from, I mean, I was so unaware of the worldwide effect of Survivor. I really was. And then, um, in fact, I made a comment before the game, one of our pregame balls. I didn't come here to do Twitter or Instagram and that sort of stuff. And now I'm charging my battery up twice a day. I think. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's just the, the support of the fans from, all four corners of the globe, as they say. It's just been amazing, and uh, it, it's been it's part of it's as much fun. I won't say that. It's been almost as much fun as actually playing the game, listening, to, talking to other people, meeting them. We've met a lot of new and interesting people from all over the place. Brilliant, brilliant. We like to hear that. Uh, after Kelly goes, um, and you obviously attempt to use the fake idol, which which, which was really we, – we liked watching that because I think it was the first episode when you found that, and it was kind of like, well, that's going to come into play later on. Dale's got that there. D- did you feel as though that you had fooled John at all? Like, did you think that John was buying the fact that you had a fake idol – well, an idol, I should say? I thought he had. Um, I wasn't sure. I, I knew they were going to split the vote. No matter what, they were going to split the vote. And um, – I thought about it the very last minute because um, there was three votes for me, um, two votes for Keith, and one vote for Missy. And I voted for Missy just so I could put Missy's name down. <laughs> I got to vote for the self-centered bossy bitch one. And um, other than that, the only thing I could have done to prevent it was if I were to wrote Keith's name down, that it would have been a tie vote, then everybody would have came back the second time and vote for me. Mm-hmm. So all I would have done was made for greater TV and more suspense but the results were going to be the same because I knew that, uh, you know, just 48 hours before that, John and uh, Jacqueline came up and shaking Kelly and I's hand and Keith did it well. We'd all sat down and talk, say, okay, we're going to vote Baylor out tonight. They came up, shake our hands, the zoo were voting out, then we get to tribal. It was two for me, two for Kelly, you know, that's, or three for Kelly, two, and two for Keith. That's the way it went. So, mm. And that, Kelly got voted out on Father's Day, and then I had to sit there, and like I told Jeff, the people that just voted my daughter out, I had to come back and shake their hand and promise to keep them around or keep me in again for the another day when I knew it wasn't going to happen. Yeah. But I had to put a smile on my face and give it my best effort, but that's Survivor. So um, I didn't have any chance of staying around that night. Very difficult, of course, as you're saying, with the whole blood versus water element to be able to have to... To, to do that and, and I could I could imagine I mean I spoke to Kelly about this too um, that it was obviously disappointing for you guys not to make it at least to the to the merge and the jury but given that you were voted out one spot away from the the merge I mean that must have been very frustrating that was um, probably of all the aspects of the game I can do with this I could deal with the tribe swap I could do this and this but to get one vote away especially when Julie was the one who quit. And knowing that she was thinking about quitting three or four days in advance during the rainstorm, because believe it or not, they didn't show this, but it rained on Kyoko the same night. You know? <laughs> I mean, they showed the rainstorm hit Hunapu, but they never showed us over there miserable in the rain. So if she would have quit when it was raining so bad, I would have been in the merge. Yeah. And it was just literally within 12 hours of making the merge. And that was something that... Um, it took a long, long time to get over on the post-jury trip of just, you know, there's so many people that would do anything to get on that game and what they would do. And to give Missy her credit, she's working with a sprained ankle. She didn't quit, all that sort of stuff. And then to quit because oh, it just... Uh, Leave a sour taste in your mouth, to say the least. Yeah, I can definitely imagine because, yeah, no, exactly. She quits the first time she was thinking of doing it, then, you know, the game's completely different. So, and all it takes is getting to the merge, and who knows what you could have done at the merge. Yeah, then it, then it goes from a blood versus water. I mean, it, it goes to the individual game. I mean, the game completely switches. It's 
the numbers would have been different. It would have been more singles against the couples instead of a couple dominated game. And the dynamics change on that thing completely the way you can, the strategy, the way you play it, who you team up with. It would have been, uh, Josh and I and Jeremy with Reed. We could, Wes and Alec, there's dominating numbers right there. And, you know, who knows what could have happened. Yeah, exactly. I asked this question to Kelly. It's a what if situation here, Dale, but I'd like to hear your thoughts on it. Had, John and Jacqueline taken out Baylor when they took out Kelly, and then Missy hypothetically goes when you go, and you and Kelly had have uh, been there instead of Missy and Baylor. D- do you feel you guys could have gone as far as uh, Missy and Baylor did? How do you think that would have played out? I think we could have gone quite far because um, I was very good uh, aligned with Josh, and I could have got over to the other side, and that's where the majority of Kelly's alliance was because Kelly was very tight with Jeremy as well as Natalie. So all of a sudden you just do that. There's five or six numbers we can come up. We we would have been in control of the game. So um, we would have been able Now, who knows? Once you get in there, who do you start targeting? John would have been a target, but then Jeremy would have been a target. But Jeremy never showed to be that good in the individual challenges. I mean, he was losing some type. He lost one challenge to Julie for – not Julie – um, he went out before one of the girls. I think it was Jacqueline. So um, you never know when it gets to those immunity challenge how they start showing their strength and that sort of stuff, how you actually start targeting people. Yeah. But I think we could have worked it pretty far into the game. How, if you had made the jury uh, and if the final three was the same, who would have you voted for to win? Uh, I probably would have voted for Natalie. Um, Jacqueline didn't have too much of a game. She voted with Missy most of the time. Missy just stabbed anybody in the back who called their daughter a spoiled little brat. Um, I mean, that was Missy's entire game. Um, Jacqueline did make a little bit of move on Josh, but it's tough to go through that game and figure what was a signature move that Missy or Jacqueline did. Where Natalie did make some moves, she played a little bit of game. She got Reed to go, which told John to play his idol, even though that was kind of a dumb move. She kept John around and got Reed gone, who is a smart guy in the game. So uh, she eventually got John. So she gave the idol to Jacqueline. She did make some strategic moves. Granted, she was making them against non-strategic people, but she still played a little bit more of the game than anybody else. Mm, yeah, it's, it's interesting. I mean, at the time of recording, you spoke to Natalie also earlier today as well about some things. And um, it's always fascinating, as I say in these interviews, to be able to speak to you guys and hear, obviously, all the things that we don't get to see. And kind of, it, it really does open up, not just for myself, but for our listeners, kind of hearing all these things. And um, particularly when, um, you know, you still don't talk to Baylor or Missy, I, I just, you know, we like hearing that at least. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I keep... Keith would have been a nice one to go just because of the old guy getting in there. He didn't make the final three and stuff, but Keith was another guy for all his strength and stuff in the immunities. He really didn't play that strategic of a game uh, throughout a lot of it. it was, he was just kind of floating on the outside and don't vote for me and I'll vote for whoever you want. So mm. I like Keith a lot, but he didn't play a, a really strategic game. He just dominated a lot in the individual immunities. Mm, yeah. Keith, fascinating guy. He must have been fun to, to hang out with. I mean, he seems like a he seems extremely funny. <laughs> oh, Keith was a great guy at the reunion show. I had a great time with the guy. I mean, he's just a down home southern boy. And actually, the, the funny part is, I think some of our parents and family and friends got along so much better than the castaway did. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> I mean, there was friends. My sister met. Uh, Nadia's mom and dad from Sri Lanka, Keith met, my, I mean, the amazing, the parents and friends and stuff, the loved ones that came to the show got along so much better than the 18 Wow, <laughs> wow, there you go. There's a future season in that there somewhere, Dale. <laughs> yeah, it probably is. <laughs> now, uh, I've got some list of questions to get to, and we'll close it up with our final five. But just a couple of things before we get to that. Um, what, what are your thoughts on upcoming season of Worlds Apart? Do you like this twist that they're uh, going to be doing with the blue collar, white collar, no collar? I think it's going to be interesting if I, from everything I've heard, where they cast everybody and then pick them apart by the tribes, that's going to be pretty good. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how the privileged, you know, or the white collar deals with the, the blue collar normally has to work. I'm going to give the edge of the blue collars mm-hmm. because they have to work with the underprivileged and, or the, the no collar tribe, and they also have to work or 
make do with their bosses. So, see, they've got inroads into both of them, and this is just my rough estimation of them, where I don't think the white collar will have a lot of use for the no collar. Yeah. You know, you got the privileged, I don't want to talk to you guys. And this is just how the class is. So I would lean towards some of the hardworking middle class, bury my nose and to the grindstone go, the blue collar tribe is the one I would kind of be leaning for having an inside edge and being able to work with both of the other tribes. Good thought process there. I like that, actually. That's a good way of looking at it. We're very much looking forward to seeing how that will, of course, um play out when that premieres. And also, just before I get to the listener questions as well, I always like to get an update on how things are going. I did ask you that right at the beginning of the interview, but I will say, uh, 2015, Dale, any big plans for this year? Just uh, got anything on the horizon? Uh, so far, nothing. Just uh, remnants of this survivor. Get on, uh, start making up 45 days of being gone with my wife. Um just racing some bicycle races and getting back to normal as much as I can. Beautiful. Um, I'll, I'll see exactly how that works out. Keep charging that phone and keep going on the uh, Farm Guy 69 Twitter handle, of course, too. <laughs> that's, that's exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, I've got some list of questions. As always, some of these do get answered in the uh, interview. I do want to point out one of our Oslets who works for this show Kate, she is a massive fan of yours, Dale. She loves you to bits, and I, I feel I need to single her out and ask if you could please say hello to our Oslet Kate, because she's a big fan of yours. Oh, Oslet Kate, thank you for listening. I appreciate all the support. I love it. There you go. There you go, Kate. You owe me. Um, Aiden Abel, Abel, I'm going to get his name pronounced one day. Um, he says, Dale, would you use the U-turn if you were on the Amazing Race? <laughs> Um, oh, yeah, I'd use a U-turn on just about anybody I could find. If it worked into the game right, I would have no hesitation. <laughs> Thanks, Aiden. Uh, Bryce Rouse said, uh, looking back, do you think there was any other move you could have done instead of the fake idol that could have kept you in the game? Oh, the only thing I thought... When the Val's vote came up, when we voted for Val, it was a 4-4 tie vote, and then once it was tied, we went and voted for Val. I very much thought about voting for Baylor at that time, because we threw four votes Baylor, four, four votes Val. If I would have thrown a swap my vote and went for Baylor, Baylor would have went home. Mm -hmm. But I think if I would have done that, I would have made everybody on my tribe mad, and I would have went home immediately the next tribe. There you go. So... You know, I probably could have got rid of my nemesis, but I wouldn't have been around to have my nemesis the way I was the other way. So um, that's about the only thing I think that could have saved me before that point. Um, but to make it past the merge, there's nothing I could have done. Okay, thanks, Bryce. Uh, Peter Trump. Now, Peter is a huge fan of your daughter. We uh, established that in our interview with Kelly before. But uh, one of the questions <laughs> he asks here, uh, he says, we all know which personality rubbed you the most in the game, uh, Missy, uh, but which player from a purely stand game standpoint frustrated you the most? Uh, I think Alec. Alec. From my tribe, because mm -hmm. he just, uh, the time I played with him, he didn't have a game. Um, him and him first and Jack went a little bit second. Neither one of them had, I could never get close to Jack when too much beauty pageant girl. Um, but Alec just didn't have a game. He really didn't. Okay. There you go. Um, that's the best I could say it. No worries. Thanks, Peter. And the last list of question I'll get to before I wrap it up with our final five, uh, Luciness, that's the name that she sent in here, says, if you started on Hunapu instead of Koyopa, who would have you tried to work with? Uh, you know, that's so tough because um, I got along with Jeremy after I met him at the Survivor reunion show. I got along with Jeremy. I got along with Reed. So I might have ended up probably with a lot of the same people that Kelly did just because at the reunion show I clicked with them so well. And um, so... Surprisingly enough, Kelly and I probably would have picked the same people to work with. There you go. Simple. Thanks, Lucy, for those questions, and thanks to everybody else who sent those in. Now, Dale, we wrap up every single interview with a set of uh, five survivor-based questions. These are all just opinion-based. There are no right or wrong answers at all, just whatever you feel is the right answer for the questions. And I start off with question number one. What are three things you learnt about Jeff Probst during your time on Survivor? Uh, let's see. What I learned about Jeff Probst. 
He's a weenie because <laughs> he said himself he would never do Survivor. He's a trash talker of the first order. Man, that man can talk trash. Um, and he can interrogate anybody like nobody's business. Beautiful. There you go. So he should really join the CIA or something, shouldn't he? He really should. They don't need to do water torture. Just <laughs> put him on tribal council with Jeff. <laughs> there you go. There's a solution to everything. Jeff Probst on the CIA. Yeah. Done. That's exactly right. <laughs> World peace is, is done with that situation. There you go, America. Uh, question number two. Out of all the seasons of Survivor, Dale, which is your favorite and least favorite? Oh, you know, I, I, I'm afraid I can't answer that. It's all good. I don't have a least favorite thing. I just like the lack of sleep, but that's all part of the game. Um, I've never, in my 15 days, I never had a deal breaker that said I wouldn't go back on the show. There's nothing I wouldn't do again. Wow. And I enjoyed it all. There's nothing I didn't like other than getting voted out. But you only got a 1 in 20 chance. So uh, what can I say? Do you, do, you have a, do you have a favorite season, though, like one that really stands out that you just can always watch over and over again? Uh, Africa, I guess. Yep. Just because that was probably one of the most brutal seasons. Mm -hmm. It's where they really push the people to their limits. Favorites, uh, there are all so many. Um, there's so many good ones, but the I think Africa is probably one of the best best ones, just for how hard it was. Okay, there you go, Africa's yeah, good season. Africa, I've got to go back and watch it again. It's been a while since I've uh, rewatched it. Uh, now, question number three. This is always difficult, uh, especially given that you are a married man, Dale. So um, I don't know how you'll answer this question. <laughs> but uh, who to you is the sexiest ever contestant? Oh, man. Um, there's been quite a few on the show. Mm -hmm. um, being how uh, the company I'm keeping right now, I'm going to have to plead the fifth <laughs> on that one. There's nobody that I can really pick out. Um, they're, they're, they're all good. Yes. How's that? Very <laughs> good political good, answer. Been... Very well done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will say Kelly answered Colby. So, um, just... Well, that I'll, I'm, I'm going to have to defer to Kelly on that one. The rest of them, I'm just... Uh, there's just too many choices. Yes, yes, indeed. I see the situation you are in. Uh, question number four. <laughs> uh, you, you can answer yourself for this one if you feel the need to. Who, to you, is the greatest player never to have won? Um, i got to go with Big Tom. Mm -hmm. Big Tom. Because he's, he's never won. I think the far, farthest he's taken is third. And just because he's a southern boy, farmer... And I liked him in Africa, and that's always been my favorite one because I got to support the farmer guy. Yep, he was he was always been a favorite. Big, so I got to go big dog. Good answer. Good answer. Question number five: Who to you is your least favorite winner? Oh, least favorite winner. Um, I'm trying to pick out some of the winners. There's um, yeah, Richard. I wasn't a fan of Richard. Okay, I'd, I'll go with Richard Hatch. He wasn't he wasn't a fan of mine, uh, even though he played the game. Um, he played. He was the first strategic player of the game, mm -hmm. but he wasn't my favorite person. Okay. I, I used to be, when people started answering Richard, I used to get scared for their safety because I always thought Richard was going to hunt them down and, like, you know, kill you. But, um, yeah, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, no, I, I think for the most part, enough people have answered Richard now, which I think you're fine now, Dale, so it's all good. Uh, <laughs> He's got too many people to chase down. Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> Final question for you today, Dale Wentworth. In the history of Survivor, who to you is the greatest ever player and why? Oh, the history of Survivor. God, you know, I'm going to have to go with a recent one, even though I didn't like the man, Tony. Mm -hmm. And this, I mean, I'm just coming up with this one. It's probably a new one I came up with. Just because he's one of the very few villains that actually went on to win the game. Mm -hmm. Very true. And I think he can thank Spencer for that. Because it's usually the villain, if you go back to the Russells and that sort of stuff, the villain, villain gets so far. But Spencer gave Tony the biggest bat on the back. He was strategic. He played the game it's supposed to be because whether you like him or not, he was a strategic player. And for that, i got to agree. Because mm. Tony did play it from a strictly strategic point, and uh, I guess he's the most recent one in memory. Heard it described recently as he could be the first person to ever not stop playing the game. So, like, in all the interviews and everything that he said, he said he'd get, like, two hours sleep because he's always laying there working out. Like, he was on for 39 days. He did not turn off at all. And I think... I, I just rewatched his season again as well, and the man is just incredible. So, I'm expecting a lot of answers for Tony for this question moving forward into the future. 
Well, because what he would say, he would go to the tribal council and change his mind at the last minute yeah. and vote somebody out from his gut and then spend the next 24 hours thinking about how to repair what he just yeah. did. And that's your strategic player. You play from your gut. All of a sudden, something happens in tribal. You slit somebody, so you stab them in the back, and then the next day you just lie your butt off to save yourself again. Yeah. And he did it great. And he explained it beautifully. We interviewed him last year, and it was a fantastic chat, and him explaining all that. But, Dale, this has been a fantastic chat with you, mate. Thank you very much for your time here. Appreciate it. Good luck with everything in uh, 2015 for yourself, for your wife, moving forward. Um, we hope to see you on Survivor one time again in the future. And also, of course, get you back here on Survivor Oz one time in the future as well. I would enjoy it very much. You can give me a call anytime. I've enjoyed it, and I'll be. A, I'd love to be on Amazing Race or Survivor. Like I say, if they give me a call, my bags could be back tomorrow. And a massive thanks to Dale. There, great fun chat, and of course, if you're a Wentworth fan, you can download the interview with Dale's daughter Kelly as well. Another fantastic chat, and three other Salmon Del Sir people today: Natalie, Jacqueline, and Jeremy. All available to keep you excited for the week and keep you listening as well and as well as our rankings cast with five parts of episode three available for you today as well. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, subscribe to us on both iTunes and YouTube. You've got all those services available and we always do appreciate your support. In the meantime, my name is Ben. This has been Survivor Oz. We will speak to you next time on The Trains. <laughs>